Hey Equippers fam, my name is Paolo and welcome home. Here in Equippers, we exist for two reasons. Now the first one is to exalt God and the second is to equip people. And in here, you belong before you believe. So if it's your first time here, don't be shy. Comment down below with the hashtag new here so that we can celebrate you as a new part of our Equippers family. Now this message may be from last week, but that doesn't mean it's incapable of blessing you motivating you or encouraging you in whatever walk of life you're in and you may know someone who needs that type of encouragement why don't you tag them down at the comment section so that they're able to be encouraged here today now it's going to be an amazing service up ahead so let's ready our hearts ears and eyes for this word coming right up and can you just tell the person beside you you made it <laughs> I know that 2022 has had its challenges. 2022 has had its mountains, you know, the, the things that we had to face. But we're here, amen, at the end of the year. And who agrees with me that despite of everything that pinagdaanan natin in 2022, God has been good to us. Amen. So, it's December already. Sino po who feels like Christmas is in the air? Come on, somebody, amen. Yeah, let's go. It's Christmas, all right? All right, so we're starting a new series. And the new series is the title also of my message. So for the month of December 2022, the new series we're starting is Here Comes the New. Come on, here comes the new. Can you tell the person beside you, here comes the new? Come on, here comes the new. Now, we all know the story of the birth of Jesus. And oftentimes when we see a nativity scene, we can see him being born. But again, do we know the full story? Do we know the context of that story? So before I start my message, I want to give you a little bit of a background on the birth of Jesus. That's something that you may not know about. Okay, so show me the next slide, please. So the last book in the Old Testament is the book of Malachi. And then the first book in the New Testament is the book of Matthew. But did you know that from the book of Malachi in the Old Testament to the new book, to the New Testament in Matthew, there was 400 years of silence. What does that mean? In the Old Testament, God spoke to people through prophets. There were prophecies being made. God spoke to people through the priests. So during the Old Testament, God spoke to people. But then all of a sudden, after the book of Malachi was written, there was 400 years where God did not speak. And He only spoke again in Matthew. He only spoke again when Jesus was born. So maybe a lot of people don't know that, that, that that's the background of the birth of Jesus Christ. There was 400 years when God was not talking, when God could not be felt. Okay? And I, want, I, I believe that these times in the life of the Israelites were some of the darkest times in their life. How do I know that? Because before I came to Jesus, my life was without Jesus. My life was without the Word of God. My life was without God. And I can tell you right now, standing here in front of you, that I know what a life without God looks like. Without God, life is hopeless. Without God, there is no peace. Without God, there is no joy. Amen? We all, I, some of you here who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you know what I'm talking about. That before Jesus came into your life, you couldn't hear God. You couldn't feel God. Amen? But I believe that today, God is reminding us that, okay, I don't want you to stay in that situation. Come on, somebody. Amen? I don't want you to stay in a place where you can't hear me, you can't feel me, you can't experience me. Right? That's why after 400 years, God spoke again. And only thing that the... But during the 400 years, the only thing that the Israelites could do was wait. Everybody say, wait. Sino sa inyo ang magsasabi sa akin this afternoon? I'm good at waiting. Can you raise your hand? Thank you to the seven people who raised their hand. I love your honesty. Ne, come on. Alam nyo, there are some people who are good at waiting, but there are some people who are not. Amen? So some people, machaga, 
kahit matagal, iintayin ko. Come on, somebody. Amen? But there are people, no, I need it today. Amen? I need it now. And this generation, actually, itong generation na to, is one of those generations that have a hard time with waiting. Kasi you live in a generation now where everything is available instantly to you. Amen? Back in the day, sa mga katukayo ko dito, no, mga kabatch ko, kama sa mga contemporaries ko, alam nyo to, when we had to do research, when we had to do a term paper or something, we had to go to the library. Amen? We had to go to newspapers. We had to cut out magazines. Pero this generation, come on somebody, amen? Anong gagawin? I-Google mo na lang. In the span of a few minutes, you have the information you need. Last night, we had an amazing party with uh, all of the volunteers here. Come on, the volunteers. We had an amazing night celebrating last night. And na-realize ko, may isa silang game. Yung game na yon was about facts. Yung may isang question doon. Uh, what was the original color of Santa Claus? Kasi we know him as red. Pero may original color pala si Santa Claus. No? Alam mo, napansin ko, yung mga games na yon hindi na pala uubra sa generation na to. Kasi once you ask the question, people are on their phones, ginugoogle na nila. So alam na nila yung answer. Actually, madaya itong generation na to. Come on, somebody, amen? Sabi namin last night, wag nyo, nyo i-google, di ba? Ano yung, kailangan na, hulaan mo, o alam mo dapat yung answer. No? But we live in a generation that, that doesn't want to wait. But for 400 years, the Israelites had to wait. Amen? Who among you believe that it pays to wait? It pays to wait. I know that for a reason. So I'm going to tell you a short story, very short story. Uh, because Pastor G is not here, I can tell this story. Because if she was here, I wouldn't tell this story. Especially since there's a lot of new people in church. Did you know, paano ko napasagot si Pastor Gigi? Now, who wants to know paano ko napasagot si Pastor Gigi? So, back when we were in college, in Ama Computer College, uh, I asked her out on a date. She said yes. Nililigawan ko pa siya nun eh. Magkikita kami sa McDonald's SMCT, sa Quezon City. So I was there before the mall opened. No? I was there at 9.30 with flowers in McDo. Nagbukas ng alas 10 ang McDo. I was there at McDo. 10 o'clock, 10.15, 10.30, 11 o'clock. Wala pa rin siya. Sabi ko, na late lang siguro, na traffic lang. 11.30, 12 o'clock, wala pa rin siya. Tanghalian na, no? gutom na ako. So I was still there. I didn't leave the place. 12 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, wala pa rin siya. But you have to understand, uh, if you know me, for those of you who are close to me, pag alam ko na it's something I really want, I'll wait for it. If it's something I'm really passionate about, I'll wait for it. So alam nyo ba na kahit wala pa siya, tatlong oras na ang dumaan, ako pa ang nagbibigay ng dahilan kung bakit wala siya. Sabi ko, siguro ganito, siguro ganyan, siguro ganyan. Alas dos na, wala pa siya. Alam nyo po, anong oras siya dumating? Alas kwatro. From ten to four, I was there. But I didn't leave. I waited. Oh, come on. I don't know if you're getting the, story, the, the meaning of my story this afternoon. I waited. And na-realize ko, nung magkita kami, nalimutan niya. Na may kadate pala siya nung araw na yon. Nung maalala niya bigla, tumakbo siya doon. Actually, pumunta siya doon. Iniisip niya, wala na ako doon. Come on, mga guys. Ito yung the moves. Alright? If you wanna win a girl, this is how you win a girl. Come on, somebody. Amen? So, after I waited that long, she arrived. She thought I wasn't there. She passed by Macdo. I was still there. Four o'clock in the afternoon, still holding the flowers. Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen? Nagbunga yung waiting ko. Some of you have been waiting for something. Some of you are getting tired. No, come on, somebody. I'm speaking this afternoon. Some of you are getting discouraged. Some of you have been praying for something from God, and you may be saying to yourself right now, Lord, it's been, it's been a while. Why hasn't it arrived? Isipin mo, the promise of a Messiah 
was given to the Jews. Someone who would deliver them from darkness. Someone who would deliver them from poverty. Someone who would deliver them from slavery. But 400 years, all they could do was wait. But I want you to know, the most exciting life that you can live is yung meron kang inaasahan. Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen? A lot of people, do you know why they give up on life? They give up on life because wala na silang inaasahan pa sa buhay. Amen? So, but all the Israelites could do was wait. Everybody say, wait. My question to you this Christmas is, what are you waiting for? Come on, somebody. Amen? Some of you are waiting to get healed. Some of you are waiting to get uh, uh, out of poverty. Some of you are waiting to be happy again. Some of you are waiting, but I want you to know one thing we all have in common, whether you like it or not, we are all waiting for something. Amen? We're all waiting for something. And one of the things that I've learned about Christmas, Christmas is about waiting for something new. Amen? I have a lot of great memories of Christmas. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. For those of you who know me, kung ako lang ang masusunod, 365 days a year, hindi ko ibababa ang Christmas tree sa bahay namin. Hindi ko aalisin ang decorations because Christmas is such a big and wonderful time of the year for me. As a kid, I used to have a lot of great memories about Christmas. Okay? I used to remember na nangangaroling kami sa daan nung time na yun. Sino may nangangaroling pa ba hanggang ngayon? Come on somebody, amen. Ayun, oh, sila Marie Jo, nangangaroling pa rin. Amen? Merong simbang gabi. Na kailangan gumising ka ng alas, magsimba ka ng alas 5 ng madaling araw. Pag hindi mo na kumpleto, hindi matutupad ang wish mo. Merong Christmas ham na niluluto ng mama ko. And I don't know if you guys remember this, ang Christmas tree ngayon, merong white, merong green, may iba't ibang kulay. But during the day, it was in the 70s or late 80s, ah, late 70s na, ang Christmas tree ng lola ko, silver. That looked amazing. It was a silver Christmas tree. Tapos naaalala ko noon, dadaling kami ng papa ko sa COD dito sa may Cubao. Uh, some of you guys, I don't know if you do. Only the, only the oldies but goodies will remember this. At may Christmas presentation doon, yung mga mannequin na gumagalaw, dadaling ako ng daddy ko, lalagay niya ako shoulder ko. There were a lot of, ano, and most of all, the parties and the family gatherings. Yan ang naaalala ko sa Pasko. Pero alam, who among you will agree with me that one of the most memorable things about Christmas is waiting for your gift. <laughs> Amen? Ang pinaka-inaabangan mo, once December 1 arrives, alam mo na sa December 25, may bubuksan kang regalo. Amen? And as a child, that was exciting. Nauso mo sa inyo yun, na yung regalo, babalutin na ng parents mo as early as, hindi naman December 1, pero before magpasko, babalutin. Ilalagay yun sa ilalim ng Christmas tree. Dati, nilalagay pa actually sa medyas eh. Merong ganun eh, noon eh. Nilalagay sa medyas. Tapos, dadaan-daanan mo yun araw-araw. Binibilang mo yung araw, December 3, December 4, December 5. Ang tagal naman ng December 25. Gusto ko na buksan yung regalo. Amen? One of the most memorable things about Christmas is knowing that your parents who love you have a gift for you. Amen? And, alam nyo, well, I've never heard a person pray I've never heard a person say, this Christmas, I want something old. <laughs> Come on. Meron ka na bang narinig na ganun? Sa Paskong ito, gusto ko lumang sapatos. Sa Paskong ito, gusto ko lumang damit. Sa Paskong ito, gusto ko yung luma. Amen? When it's Christmas, what do you ask for? What? What? Then you, you want something new. Amen? And one of the most memorable things during Christmas is that bago sapatos mo, bago damit mo. Come on, somebody. Amen? That made it exciting for us. Pero alam nyo, there are still people, despite of the fact that God has something new for them, they still want to live in the old. I, know, I love my Lola, no? Nung, when she was still alive. Uh, my Lola... Minsan tatawagin ako niyan. Eh, sali ka rito. Sabi niya. Mag-uusap tayo. Pag nag na yung lola ko, delikado na po yun. Basta mag-uusap kayo. Sabi niya, alam mo apo, nung bata pa kami, 
Pag nagsimula po ng ganon, you know it's four hours. Minimum na magkukwento siya. Nagsimula nung bata siya eh. So hanggang sa pagtanda niya. And sometimes, natutuwa naman ako, I would give her that time kasi I know yun na nagpapasaya sa kanya when she can talk about her past. Kasi for some people, the happiest days, the happiest Christmases, para bang they're all in the past. Okay? But this is what I've learned. If you keep dreaming of the past, you will miss the dream of the future. Amen? If you keep dreaming and thinking, there's nothing wrong about, about reminiscing the past. There's nothing wrong about honoring the past. There's nothing wrong na maging pamisa-misa, alalahanin mo yung mga magandang nangyari sa buhay mo. I believe what is wrong is that you live in the past. Amen? Na nabubuhay ka doon sa mga magagandang araw na nakaraan sa buhay mo, pero hindi mo naiisip may mas magagandang araw pa na parating sa buhay mo. Come on, somebody. Amen? Come on, if you believe this, come on, give the Lord some praise. Many of us, we think that Christmas will never be as good as compared to when we were children. Na masaya lang yung Pasko dahil bata tayo. Nung bata tayo, enjoy na enjoy natin ang Christmas. But as you grow up, alam mo bakit enjoy na enjoy natin ang Christmas? Kasi nung bata ka, wala ka namang babayarang kuryente. Wala ka namang babayarang tubig. Wala kang babayarang rental ng bahay. Wala kang babayarang tuition fee ng anak. Nung panahon na yon, all you had to do was to wait for your gift. Pero dahil lumaki na tayo, we grew up, sometimes nawawala na yung spirit of Christmas. And minsan may mga tao magsasabi, alam mo ang Pasko, para na lang yan sa mga bata. Amen? And I tell you, you would be right. Okay? But this is it. Christmas is for children. Yes. That's true. Sabi mga sa tabi mo, Christmas is for children. But I want to read you a verse in the Bible that tells us that even though we're grown up, we should be like children. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 to 5. Come on, if you want to praise Jesus, give Him some praise. For an answer, Jesus called over a child whom He stood in the middle of the room and said, I'm telling you once and for all that unless you return to square one and start over like children, you're not even going to get a look at the kingdom, let alone get in. Whoever becomes simple and elemental again, like this child, will rank high in God's kingdom. What's more, when you receive the childlike on my account, it's the same as receiving me. Wow. In another translation, this says, unless you become like little children, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to rephrase that. Unless you become little children, you will never appreciate and enjoy Christmas. I want you to know that Christmas is for children, yes, but Christmas is also for those with childlike faith. Amen? For those of you who know me, I love Christmas. It is my favorite time of the year, but I love it simply because I view it with childlike faith. Amen? No, nung Pasko noon, kung may, kung may regalo sa akin ng magulang ko, I believe that our Father in Heaven, who is also our parent, has a gift for us every Christmas. Amen? Naniniwala ako na kung yung magulang nga natin may regalo sa atin, yun pang ama mo sa langit. Naniniwala ako na this Christmas, God has a gift for you. Oh, you don't sound excited. God has a gift for you. Come on, somebody. God has a gift for you. Amen? It says in Matthew 7, verse 9 to 11. Come on, somebody. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give, 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 give good gifts to those who ask him? So sabi ng Bible, kung yun ngang minsan parent na, na that is not good, knows how to give good things to their children, how much more your Father in heaven? Amen? So I believe that many of the things we experience, you know, sabi sa Bible, we were created in the image of God. So many of the things that happen to us, these are things that reflect who God is. 
And God is a father. Everybody say father. And a father, alam nyo, bilang magulang, naalala ko noon, nung maliliit pa si Jewel, si Jade, at si Jasmine, wala pa po kaming business noon. Nagtatrabaho po ako noon, uh, um, service crew. Minsan, nandun ako sa Abenson, nagtrabaho po ako ng sales agent sa Abenson. Wala kaming pera. Pero ang gagawin namin pag Pasko, bibili kami ng maraming murang laruan. Hindi yung isang malaking laruan, kundi yung maraming murang laruan. Bakit? Kasi wala nga kami pera. So ang gusto namin, yung mga bata, feeling nila, ang dami nilang regalo. Pero ang totoo nun, mura lang lahat yun. Pero nakikita mo yung joy sa buhay, sa, bu sa, sa kanila. Na, nung Pasko, wow, isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, mga pitong regalo bubuksan nila. You could see the joy in their heart. I want you to know that God is in heaven, is so happy pag dumating yung pagkakataon na nareceive mo yung regalo na nanggaling sa Kanya at binuksan mo na ito at nakita mo na ito at na-experience mo na ito. Amen? I want you to know that in this Christmas, if you want to enjoy it, who wants to have a great Christmas? Come on, somebody. Who wants to have a blessed Christmas? Come on. I know merong bills. I know may mga bayaran. I know may mga concern tayo. But this Christmas, can you just have childlike faith? Amen? Pwede ba ngayong Pasko, umasa ka? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, umasa ka. Umasa ka na may regalo ka galing sa Panginoon. Amen? What were, the, what were the Israelites doing during the time that they were waiting? They were hoping. Amen? They were hoping for yung promise ni God matupad na, ma mamangyari na. Amen? So, hope, asa. Umasa tayo ngayong Pasko. Kasi naniniwala ako na merong regalo ang Diyos para sa bawat isa sa atin. Amen? So, let me read another verse. Matthew 6 verse to 8. Come on, if you want to praise Jesus. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Alam niyo ba ang parent? Ano ang ginagawa ng parent? Bago magpasko, pinag-aaralan na niya, ano ba yung gusto ng anak ko? Amen? I'm sure ganun din kayo. Magre-regalo kayo kayong pasko, yung re-regaluhan nyo, pinag-aaralan nyo na kung ano yung gusto niya. Kasi ang pinakamagandang regalo, yung gusto mo. Amen? Naniniwala ako, this Christmas is the same thing. God already knows what you want. God already knows what you're praying for. God already knows what you need. Amen? At inihanda na niya yon para sa iyo. Amen? Pero ito yung problem. Sabi rito, ask. Everybody say, ask. One more time, ask. The Bible says you do not receive because you do not ask. And alam nyo, some people, we don't come near to God because, Lord, ang dami kong palpak this 2022. I've made many mistakes this 2022. Kaya, Lord, nahihiya akong humiling sa'yo. Nahihiya akong lumapit sa'yo. Can I just tell you right now, alam nyo ba that God is not surprised when you fail? Alam nyo ba na pag nagkamali si Pastor Ace, God doesn't go, oh, Grabe, nagkamali si Ace. God is not surprised because in the Bible it says He remembers we are dust. He knows we're not perfect. He's not surprised when you fail. But He's excited. He's not surprised when you fall down. But He's excited when you get up. He's excited when you get up. Come on somebody, amen? Kaya alam mo ba kay God right now, it doesn't matter if your 2022 wasn't so good. Amen? Sabi nga nila, in a race, it's not important how you start, it's how you finish. Amen? Sa isang karera raw, hindi mahalaga yung simula. Ang mahalaga yung paano mo siya tatapusin. So nandito na tayo sa end of the year. Maaring hindi naging maganda from January all the way to November. Pero pwede bang sa December? Come on somebody, amen? Can we make December? Can we make a push for the finish line? Can we make a push for the win? Amen? And let's finish the race strong. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, finish strong. Come on, finish strong this year. A new Christmas needs a new faith. Amen? I want to encourage you, ask from God. Because He is a good Father. Amen? He is a good Father. I want you to know that if this is a new Christmas, it needs a new faith. 
This is not the Christmas of 2021. This is not the Christmas of 2020 or 2019. This is the Christmas of 2022. And I want you to know every year there's a new gift that God has for you. That's why I'm excited about every Christmas. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why I believe the best Christmas of my life has not happened yet. Every year, alam nyo ba, I believe that every year, the best is yet to come. Amen? Sa buhay ko, taon-taon, excited ako sa Pasko, excited ako sa bagong taon. Because here comes the new. Laging may bago pag sa Panginoon. Laging may bago kay Lord. Amen? Tell the person beside you, here comes the new. But let's go back to the story. 400 years of silence. Why was God silent for 400 years? I have two theories on why God was silent for 400 years. Number one, and I got this theory from watching my wife, Pastor Gigi. So you know very well that Pastor Gigi is a very busy person. Amen? So, minsan po, lalapit ako kay Pastor Gigi. And nandun siya sa cellphone niya. May mga kinakausap siya. Kinakausap ko siya. Ma, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Alam mo ba yung pakiramdam na kinakausap mo yung isang tao pero parang hindi kanya na naririnig? Okay? Di ba? So minsan, yan, si Mitch ganyan yan. <laughs> yeah, kinakausap mo siya pero ano, na, na, may ginagawa siya. So, anyway, minsan, pag ginagawa ni Pastor Gio sa akin, na-offend ako. At siya, nag-iisip ako, sabi ko, galit ba siya sa akin? Ba't niya ako iniimikan? Pero alam niyo ba ang totoo, nalaman ko through the years, minsan hindi naman pala siya galit, busy lang siya. Amen? Hindi siya umiimik dahil hindi siya galit. Hindi siya umiimik kasi busy lang siya. Hindi ko alam kung nag-gets niyo yung ibig ko sabihin dito, no? I want you to know that God's silence means He's working. Come on? A lot of times, alam mo yung mga Israelites, may dahilan si God magalit sa mga Israelites. Kasi matigas nga yung ulo nila. Pero despite that, I want you to know, one of the reasons I believe that God was not, work, was not speaking for 400 years was God was preparing for this great moment which is the birth of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that in your life, God has never stopped working. Kahit pa nung panahon lumayo ko sa Kanya, God was still working. Kahit pa yung panahong hindi mo siya pinapansin, God is still working. Kahit ngayong Pasko, God is still working. Amen? Minsan tumitigil ka, pero ang Diyos hindi tumitigil para sa'yo. Amen? Minsan nakakalimot ka, pero ang Diyos hindi nakakalimot sa'yo. Amen? So I believe that 400 years, God was not speaking. It wasn't because He was angry. It was because I'm doing something. I'm getting something ready. Amen? And the second reason why I believe that God was not speaking is this. Sometimes God is silent because He knows we are still not willing to obey because God always speaks to the obedient. Amen? Who needs a word from God? Who needs a word from God? Sabi ni Jasmine in her last preaching, get a word from God this Christmas. Amen? Pero minsan nagpe-pray ka, tagal mo na nagpe-pray, nagbabasa ka, nag-devotion ka, you don't get a word. Why don't you get a word? Because maybe God knows that if He gives you a word, pero di mo naman susundin, masasayang lang yung word na binigay niya sa'yo. Amen? Do you get me? You never put gas in a car that's going nowhere. Amen? Why would God give you a word kung hindi mo naman pala susundin? Amen? So if you want a word this Christmas, you have to first pray. You have to pray deeply and say, Lord, give me a word and I'll do it. Amen? And believe me, God will break His silence. God will speak to you. Come on, somebody, amen? How do I know that? Because in this church, there are people who I know always get a word from God. And what is, what is that one thing that they have in common? All of these people in church that always receive a word from God are obedient people to God. 
Because they follow God, they always get a word from God. Amen? So maybe this Christmas, ang kulang na lang ay yung sumunod ka. Come on, somebody, amen? God's ready to give you the word, pero ang tanong is, are you gonna follow the word? Pag sinabi ba niyang patawarin mo na, patatawarin mo na talaga. Pag sinabi ba niyang iwanan mo na, iiwanan mo na ba talaga? Pag sinabi ba niyang baguhin mo na, babaguhin mo na ba talaga? Amen? So you have to tell yourself, yes, Lord, this time if you say so, I'll do it. Believe me, that's when God will break His silence and that's when you get a word from God. Come on, if you want to praise Jesus in the house. For 400 years, God broke His silence and He first spoke to people who, who would, the first people He spoke to are the people who would obey His word. In the story of the birth of Jesus, He spoke first to Zechariah, then to Mary, the mother of Jesus, then to Joseph, and then to the shepherds to announce Jesus' birth. Amen? You know what's amazing to me about this story? Jesus is a king. Amen? Dapat siguro, God talked to the king first. God talked to, the, to royalty. God talked to the priests. But no, He talked to ordinary people. He broke His silence. He talked to shepherds. Amen? Can I just say this morning, maybe iniisip mo, Lord, I must have, I don't have what it takes for you. I, I, I'm not good enough for you to speak to me. I'm not good enough. No. I want you to know that right now, that the message of God's love, the message of God's salvation, the message of God's blessing is for everyone. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, it's for you. Now, I want you to see the, the greatness of this moment. There were some shepherds that day. They've been shepherding all their life. Nagaalaga sila ng sheep. And then they came that day not knowing that on that day, 400 years of silence was going to be broken. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. Come on, church! And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heaven and on earth peace to those of whom His favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So this moment, when the angels sang, when the angels talked, was the moment God finally spoke to Israel once more. And He didn't speak to kings. He spoke to shepherds. Amen? I want you to know that at this moment, the Old Testament ended and the New Testament began. The moment God speaks to your life is the moment the old has gone and the new has come. The moment that God speaks is the end of the old and the start of the new. Amen? And I just want to tell you this afternoon, who wants a great Christmas? Come on, somebody! There are some old things in your life that have to end. Come on, somebody. There are some things in your life that you, di mo, kahit ano sabi mo, Lord, babaguhin ko na, babaguhin ko na, pero hindi ko pa rin mababago. The Israelites tried to change their lives, but they couldn't. The only time that their history changed, the only time that their life changed, was when Jesus was finally born. Amen? So I want you to know that God's word is the end of the old and the beginning of the new. Amen? This Christmas, you want a great Christmas? We got to give up the old. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, give it up. Come on, you know what it is. You know about those things that you know have been delaying your destiny. 
You know about those things that are unfruitful in your life. You know about those things that have been weighing you down. You know about those habits, those things in your life that are not causing you to be blessed. This time, God wants to give you an amazing gift. But before He can give you the new, we have to put an end to the old. Amen? I want you to know that God's Word begins a season of transition. When God spoke after 400 years, it was the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. It was a transition from the prophets to the Messiah. And I want to show you the value of transition. And I want to show you a small testimony of my life in a nutshell. Okay? Show me the next slide. This is my life so far. Amen? Some of you know my testimony. At the age of 17, I was a rebel youth with my wife. We had a baby at 17. I was already a father. And then, no ipanganak yung aking daughter na si Chewel. Everybody say new. One more time, new. I was 17 years old. I did not know how to become a father. This was new to me. Okay? How many of you know there's really no book on how to become a father? Amen? This was new. Pero, however, I had to learn fast how to become a father because I already had a child. And then, after a while, I became a Christian. Again, everybody say new. This was another new thing in my life. I gave my life to Jesus. I surrendered it to Him. But I didn't know how to become a Christian. Amen? Pero ito yung, this is one of the reasons why we can't get into the new. Sometimes, Lord, I want to figure things out first. Lord, give me a few details so that I know how to make my steps. Alam mo bang, God will never give you the details. God will never give you any kind of information. You know why? May alam of us, ganito ang attitude natin. Lord, God, show me and I will follow. But do you know that with God, it's follow and I will show you. Amen? I didn't know how to be a father, but this was a new thing in my life. But I said, yeah, okay. I'm going to step into the new. I had to leave all my old childish behaviors behind. Because I was a father now. Then I had to become a Christian. That was also new. And then after a while, thank God for the faith of my wife. God said, oh, you're going to be a businessman. But I'm an undergraduate. I never finished college. So, Lord, how can I become a businessman? And again, I didn't have all the information. I didn't have the experience. I didn't have anything. All I had was a word from God that said, take a step forward. I'm bringing you into something new again. So I went into becoming a business person and we became business people. And then a few years later, I was a mountaineer and God wanted me to become a missionary. Everybody say new. Here comes the new again. This was another new season in my life. I knew how to be a mountaineer. I didn't know how to become a missionary. I went to Kibungan Binget. I didn't know what I was getting into. But then, I learned how to become a missionary when I was there. And then, for after eight years of becoming a missionary, God gave me a word. I was talking to my brother this morning, si Chris. He told me in his devotion this morning, he read something from the book of Deuteronomy. And that verse was so amazing because that's the same verse I got when I transitioned from being a missionary to becoming a pastor. Sabi nung verse, you have been encamped here for too long. And can I just say this afternoon? Some of you here, have been staying in a situation for too long. You've been stay, staying in your loneliness. You've been staying in your depression. You've been staying in your poverty. You've been staying in defeat. You've been staying in dreamlessness. You've been staying in a situation for too long. And God is saying, 
I don't want you to stay there because that's not the life that I planned for you. I didn't plan you to stay in depression. I didn't plan you to be defeated. I didn't plan you to be a slave of your past. I planned you to be victorious. I planned you to succeed. I planned you to overcome. Can you tell the person beside you, don't stay there. Don't stay there. Don't stay in the pain. Don't stay in unforgiveness. Don't stay there. I learned long ago, there is no future in your past. No matter what you do, there's no future in your pain. There's no future in the things that have happened to you. Those are the things you leave behind because there's something better waiting for all of us. So the Lord said, you have been encamped here long enough. It's time to change the season. It's time for the new. I'm bringing the new. Here comes the new. Pero alam nyo, nung missionary ako, I said to God, Lord, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. This is true. I never wanted to become a pastor. I don't know how to become a pastor. I'm not a Bible college graduate. I don't have the credentials. I'm good as a missionary. I'm already successful. I'm serving you in this season. But God said, no, you don't understand. This is not it. There is more. Wherever you are right now, it's just a preparation for what's bigger. Wherever you are right now, it's a preparation for what's grander. By being a businessman, by being a missionary, was all a preparation for me becoming a pastor. Tell the person beside you, here comes the new. Ito na po. Pastor na ako. And you would think this would be the I've reached the summit. Maybe this is how far God can take me. But no, here it comes again. 2022, here comes the new season again. I become a grandfather in 2022. Come on, somebody, man. I don't know how to become a grandfather. It's a new season. I believe, and I'm going to share this this afternoon, I didn't share this this morning. I'm in a new season of not leading the church, but of equipping people to lead the church. I'm in a season now of discipling. I'm now in a season of raising the next generation. And some of you are here, sitting right here, right now. So there are seasons in life. I want you to look at my life so far. That's my life so far. But what if, when I was a Christian, I decided to say, No, Lord, I don't want to come into the season of becoming a businessman. I don't want the new. What if I said, Lord, I don't want to become a missionary. I don't want to do this stuff. What if as a missionary, I decided to say, Lord, I don't want to become a pastor. I'm not going to step into that. I don't know what I'm going to do there. Every step I've made is a step of faith. Every step I made, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what God was going to do. But because I love God, I followed Him. And can you imagine what I would have lost if I stayed in the old and didn't come into the new? I would not be here today. I would not be preaching. I would not be friends with all you beautiful people. I would never have traveled the world. I would never have met the people I've met. I would have never enjoyed this life that I could. I would never have thought life could be happy. I would never have thought that life could be so beautiful if I had stayed in the old and never came into the new. For some of you, that is my encouragement. Wherever you are, please don't be satisfied. Wherever you are right now, please don't be content. Wherever you are right now, can you stop making excuses? Can you start following God and saying, Lord, I don't know what is ahead. But if you're telling me to go, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be in a place where you're not. I don't want to be in a place that's fruitless. I don't want to be in a place that's empty. I want to be in a place where you are. Because where Jesus is, there is hope. Where Jesus is, there is life. Where Jesus is, there is a future. Moses said it the best. Lord, 
and if you're not going with us, I won't go anywhere. I only go where you go. And can I tell you this this afternoon? God never goes back to the old. He never goes back to the old. God is always marching towards the new. Come on, somebody. There are some people here in church. You know me. I love you, but I'm going to push you. You suddenly wonder, why are, why are you pushing me? I'm pushing you because I know you're not supposed to be here. I'm pushing you because I know that God has more. How do I know that God has more? Because that's the story of my life. That's me right there, the rebel youth, all the way down to the pastor, to the grandfather, to the businessman. But that's all because I always know when it's the season to move. I'm going to answer one important question. Pastor Ace, how do you know when the season is over? Do you want to know the answer? Napaka simple. When there's no more harvest, when there's no more fruit, pag wala nang ibinubunga, the season is over. You don't need to stay there anymore. It means that God has moved on. We gotta move on to the next new thing. We gotta move on to the next opportunity. We gotta move on to the next destiny. You can't stay there. If God's not there, there's no more fruit. There's no more life. I don't want to be in a place where God is not there. I'm going to go straight into my last lesson as I close. This year, one of the greatest blessings of my life, one of the new, here comes the new. Everybody say, here comes the new. So when I found out last, last year that, I know February, I think, that Jane's wife, Kay, was pregnant. So we were going to have a baby. I was going to be a grandfather. So for the first time, you know, iba, iba pala yung inaabangan mo yung anak mo, iba din yung inaabangan mo yung apo mo. So I was excited, I was, ano, and I was waiting for it, you know. And I will, I will never forget the day I first saw Noah. So I want to show you a picture of Noah. So this is Noah. When the first time I saw him, I can now imagine what the shepherds felt. That night, they saw Jesus. When he saw Jesus, because when I saw Noah, I said, this child is blessed. He doesn't have to go through the pain that I went through. He doesn't have the curses that I have. He doesn't have the, the th he doesn't have to go through the defeat that I've gone. His life is different. His life is blessed. It's a different generation. It's new. And I can imagine shepherds, when they first saw Jesus, that's what they saw. And they, the Bible says they left rejoicing. And they left and they told everybody, the king has been born. Every time I look at Noah now, you know what I see? I see God is good. I see that the future is bright. What is the significance of the birth of Christ? The birth of Christ was the sign that the new was coming. And as we start this Christmas, can I make you excited? Can I make you be filled with anticipation? Because the new is coming this Christmas. Are you ready for the new that's coming this Christmas? Concordia will never longer be a victim of our past, but he carries a promise for the future. A baby was born so that he could be the symbol of the coming of the new. And here's my last message, my last lesson. Maybe you have been waiting for your new season, but maybe your new season has been waiting for you. Come on, if you want to give Jesus some praise, give him some praise. stand up at this moment as I close. Church, God's message today is can we so
surrender the old? Can we surrender the old? As we start Christmas, don't carry the old into the new year. Don't carry the old into this Christmas. Because God has something new for you. Can you tell the person beside you, here comes the new. Are you ready? Here comes the new. What are you going to do? There's new joy coming. There's new hope coming. There's new peace coming. There's new blessings coming. Come on, somebody, if you're excited, there's something new that's coming. Our job is to get our hearts ready. So this afternoon, let's prepare our lives. God's going to do something amazing this year, this month of December, before the year starts, the new year starts. And that is a new gift. Your Father in Heaven has prepared a long time ago. Can we close our eyes? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, today, here comes the new. We finally understand, Lord God, that the birth of Jesus was the beginning of something new. So, Father, I pray right now that we understand this story more. You did not want the Israelites to stay in the past. You do not want us to stay in the past. You want us to move forward to the future. So Father, today I pray that as we worship, as we give you praise, that Father God, you touch our hearts, that we may let go what we need to let go, and that we may embrace the new things that you have for us. There's a new season coming. There's a new hope that's coming. There's a new joy that's coming. Here comes the new Lord. Come on, church, let's worship the Lord. Christmas can be the moment that changes your life forever. 
Maybe this Christmas you can receive the greatest gift that God has given you. And that is His Son, Jesus Christ. So while every eye is closed, knowing, not looking to the left or to the right, wala mo nang titingin sa kanyang katabi. Habang nakapigit po tayong lahat, if you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of life, can I ask you to raise your hand right now? Can I ask you to raise your hand? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that hand that was raised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you can put your hand down. Thank you. I want to challenge you. If you raise your hand, this is a special moment. I'm not offering you religion. I'm offering you a chance to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you raise your hand, or maybe you didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you know that God is knocking on the door of God. Can I invite you to join me in a prayer to accept Jesus into our lives? Let's all close our eyes and let's all pray. And if that's you at this moment, I pray that you pray this prayer. And if you pray this prayer, I know that today can be a new day. Lord God, I thank you for this moment. I open my heart to you, Jesus. Forgive me for all of my sins, all of the things I've done wrong towards other people, towards you. And today, Lord, I just open my heart to you to become the Lord and Savior of my life. And Father, starting today, I surrender everything, my past, my present, and my future. Today, Lord, be my best friend. Be my father. I give everything to you. I surrender, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior. And thank you, Lord, for loving me. For who I am, oh Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for the greatest gift that is your Son. Jesus, thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, can we celebrate with them? Hey guys, we hope that you were blessed with that message. And again, to anyone who's here with us for the first time, we invite you to our ePlace Online. It's a virtual space where we can pray for you and of course, get to know you. You can also stay for a couple of minutes to see all of our post-service slides so that you are updated with everything that's happening in the church. But of course, if you need any more information, don't hesitate to like and follow all of our social media platforms. And that's it for today's Sunday service. We hope that you are blessed and we'll see you again next Sunday.